Hi, it's Remy and welcome to my channel. So you might have heard last week that Lightroom released Denoise AI and you might even have tried this functionality and now you might even be wondering how does it compare to DxO Pure Raw 3 that does kind of a similar job on denoising and also Topaz Denoise which is also a suite that performs some denoising um, improvement. Um, so I'm going to compare in this video those three software and see which one provides the best result and which one you can consider using. And then after that, I'm also going to have a little chat and talking about what can we expect next from Lightroom and Adobe in general. So we're going to try to look at a picture and compare those three softwares and before that I just want to also remind you that I am using a Fujifilm X-T3 here and actually Fujifilm is unfortunately known for having higher level of noise than other brands like Nikon or Sony and so I guess it's going to be a very good example here for the um, for, for the test on those three software and also I guess it's a comparable noise when considering the new models like the X-T4, the X-T5, X-H2 and X-H2S that have been uh, released more recently. So I guess it's going to be again a new, uh, an interesting um, comparison on the, the three software and see if Fuji actually performs well. So I'm going to now switch to the computer and let's take a look at this. So this is the picture that uh, we're going to use uh, to uh, try the tree software. This is a picture I took at uh, the Devil Teeth in Senya Island at the end of March this year. Um, it's actually a picture I took on my way back to my motor home and uh, suddenly those auroras appeared and that was like just amazing so i decided to stop and um, and photograph them again that was actually a great uh, a great choice because the, the the picture is really great and um, it was shot at iso 3200 um, 12 millimeters with um, aperture at f 2.0 and a shutter speed of eight seconds so i shot this with my fujifilm xt3 and with the Samyang 12 millimeters f2.0 so now let's take a look at how the noise is on this image so now it's zoomed at 300 percent so let's get a little bit more on the right and i chose this place here because we get a very good overview of the sky the aurora some of the stars and obviously the mountain here at the bottom and as we can see here, it's very noisy. And that's actually something which is also happening a lot with Fuji. We have the warming effect here. If you use Capture One, you may not have uh, this warming effect as present, but I switched to Lightroom a few months ago because uh, it was offering a better tools for for my landscape photography and especially the masking. So I decided to continue with it and I'm processing basically the noise uh, in post-processing to get uh, clean files or at least as clean as I can and here like this is just a processed file where I did some few basic adjustments and we can see that there is a lot of noise and and uh, the sky is like really noisy the foreground as well the mountain and um, now we will see what the softwares are doing to this file so the first software is DxO um, Pure Raw. So this is the plugin for, for um, Lightroom. I actually uh, just used uh, the trial for DxO because I wanted to see if I like the, the plugin and if it provides me with good results. And I was very lucky because actually the, my trial ended on the week, uh, Lightroom released its day noise AI. So I can try both and see the, and compare it and see if I continue with DxO or if I stay with Lightroom. So that's interesting. So I can't launch it here because my trial expired, but basically you would get this window here. You would, um, I, I think the process is cumbersome. So you would go in Lightroom in um, basically 
and you would go to plugin extra file plugin extra then choose the dxo puro then you would have this window appearing where you choose which kind of processing you want some optical correction that you wish the output format and also the destination that you want to use then you will start the processing I mean, as it's written here, it's about a minute and that's fairly accurate. It needs about a minute to process a, a file. And then and the annoying part is that it opens it into a quick collection, uh, which is named DXO. DXO. And uh, from there, you get your file. And then if you want to compare it, then you need to get back all the way to your uh, initial folder. So that's that's a little bit cumbersome and I didn't really like it so much. But anyways, here we are looking at the result. So if we look at here the result, we see a fairly clean file. So by putting here, I'm approximately at the same place as on the other one, on the original file. And we see that the sky is fairly homogeneous, like the noise is reduced like by a lot. The mountain on the foreground are almost not noisy anymore. It's really great. And remember that we are zooming here at 300%, which is a lot. So if I compare the two files, so on the left hand side is Lightroom, on the right hand side is the, the outcome from the XO. So we can clearly see an improvement. I would say that there might be actually a little bit less sharpness, uh, especially here if we see in the mountains, it's a little softer um, than what we get in Lightroom. But since there is so much noise removed, I think this makes for a much better and much more usable file. So that's what we get here with the XO. Uh, your raw tree. Now let's give a shot at Lightroom, what it gives us. So basically you go on the right panel and under the detail and below the sharpening section, then you have the denoise AI. You can either do the manual denoise or the AI, but here we want to use the AI. So let's go for it. So 65 was the previous. <laughs> previous parameters I used. Uh, it needs a little bit of time to uh, basically get the file and to um, to, to uh, generate a preview. So let's wait a little bit for it. So we got our preview here and if we look at it here quickly on the, on the small box that we have here, I still think that it's a little too noisy in my opinion. So I will tend to increase it a lot and I will go at 60. Let's try to get to 60 with the slider. I will just write it down, I guess it's quicker. We get to 60 or maybe a little more, 65. Let's say that we are fine at 65. I could have like, I mean, for the sake of this example, I will keep 65, which might be maybe a little stronger. And then we click on Enhance. So it will basically create a new file, which will be, uh, I think, a DNG file. And we will see what the outcome will. Then we can work on it as, um, as, as we want. And it actually takes also, let's say, the basic processing that you used on the uh, original file. So you won't have to redo them be immediately used. And now it's generated, so I guess it needed between 20 and 30 seconds, so it's fairly quick to be frank. And now let's see the results. So I will go immediately in the comparison. So I do have on the left hand side, this is my uh, Lightroom file, original Lightroom file. And actually, let's take a look here. And that's actually amazing. I mean, if we look at the two files, there is like, it's two different worlds. So first of all, the noise, the noise is removed by a lot, but like really a lot. We can see a few artifacts here, like, I don't know if you see my mouse here, and we can see a few artifacts, but to be fair, since it's zoomed in at 300%, that's probably artifacts that we would not see, even if we print, let's say maybe up to a meter, on the longer side and if we publish this on social media it's clear that it will never be seen and 
the mountain is just amazing. It really did an amazing job in uh, recovering details and removing the noise. I mean, I'm really surprised how much detail is recovered here. It's really, really great. So, and now let's um, compare this, the, this file with the DXO. So I'm gonna put the DXO on the left hand side here and see what the outcome is. So these are like two different worlds. So I like the sky in DXO because as I said before, it's really uniform and homogeneous, but to be fair here, there is nothing to compare with Lightroom. I mean, Lightroom recovers so much details on the mountain, like the sharpness and the details are like just here. Everything is so soft on the mountain, on the DXO Pure Raw. It's a, it's a little crazy. And the sky, we still have the artifacts, of course, on, the, on Lightroom. Uh, but the details are like so much more present than what we have on the on the DXO file. So that's to be fair, <laughs> that's a little disappointing what we're getting on DXO when we compare it. Like if you look at the stars, the stars are just perfect here on Lightroom and here they're like really like still blurry uh, and little very soft uh, on the DXO software. All right, so that gives us like fairly good insight of the performance of uh, Lightroom. And now let's take a look at Topaz Denoise. So I'm gonna generate it. So you need to go click right, then edit in Topaz Denoise. I usually use Topaz Denoise on my uh, JPEG. So the very last step, it does a very good job at doing so. Uh, but for the sake of this example, I'm gonna use the, the, the software directly and it should open fairly quickly so these are the parameters i used before for similar type of pictures so i'm going to keep them basically using a seven noise uh, denoise and removing a little bit of noise like about 20 percent and enhancing some the, the sharpness in the file and recovering some original details here. And I will maybe increase this a little bit to 50%, 51, up 50%. And let's see, so at first glance, if you just like use the slider in Topaz, you can see that it removes a lot of noise. That's clear. And now let's see how it compares when we get back into Lightroom. actually generates a TIFF file, which uh, I guess you can get a PSD as well. But I usually don't uh, don't use it uh, in that way. I usually use, as I said before, a JPEG and then uh, process it on a JPEG directly. So I would say that it still works here. So we got our file generated here. So let's get this one as a reference. We've got our Topaz file here on the right hand side and we will compare it to our original Lightroom. Like this. So I guess here it's fairly obvious that the original Lightroom is very noisy and there is a huge difference between the two. So I would say that the new file generated by uh, Topaz is actually much better than the original one from Lightroom. Although I find that the mountains here look a little bit strange, maybe like over sharpened, but not in a very, very uh, good manner. So it's a little strange. And if we compare it now to the XO, I would say we get like something fairly different. As I said, the XO is losing a lot of details, unfortunately. It removes well the noise and everything is homogeneous, but it, it removes so much details too. So that's, uh, and you don't have a slider or anything to compensate this, which is a little bit annoying. Um, and so you get with this result. And here we still have a lot of details, much more than here. And the noise is very well removed too. So I would say that, uh, I would say that the, 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 um, Topaz file is a little better. And now if we compare it to the Lightroom Denoise, so once again here, we, it's a two different world. So still are some few artifacts here in the sky, especially if we look here, there is that kind of a strange line, but this is not really problematic because we are zoomed in a lot. The details in the mountain, I mean, to me, the details in the mountain are just amazing. 
and and that's really impressive and uh, everything is softer on the topaz file while everything is much sharper on lightroom like look at the stars it's, it's really different like two different worlds i am actually fairly impressed by the result that we're getting from lightroom here the level of details that we get on um, the picture compared to other software that are on the market for much longer for similar type of uh, functionality is really impressive like the details are high the noise removal was great few artifacts in the sky but we were zoomed at 300 percent so nothing was actually too much visible i mean if we print this like probably up to one meter that's on the longer side that's not going to be visible if you publish on instagram it's not going to be visible that's for sure and you're going to publish a clean file that's really impressive what uh, adobe did here and now we can expect adobe actually to get even like more involved into the ai field and i guess that's a bad news for all the other companies that were like relying on the on this flow of lightroom and selling the the software to uh, kind of balance the the poor results that we were getting on lightroom but now this is in my opinion and that's what i wanted to say at the beginning that i'm gonna open up the discussion on what is coming next and if you guys actually have some also uh, information or thinking on the on the topic then feel free to let me uh, uh, comment on this uh, on the comment section below and and let's start the discussion there so yeah i guess now the first thing that will happen is that we've got a denoise it's gonna just get better over time and uh, only improve and we will also we can imagine that we're gonna get some sharpening an answer or something like this in the future which is something that um uh that topaz is actually having and then we won't need to use topaz anymore they're like also the xo provides a little bit of uh, the um of enhancing and he's a pure raw uh, enhancer but I, I don't think it's to the level of uh, of topaz so i guess that's the beginning of something much bigger and much cooler because to me having everything in one place in lightroom is actually just the perfect thing that's the only thing i needed here i i'm really annoyed by using plugins and other software around so if i can have everything in one software and use it here that's just great and and now lightroom made it happen so i can only be happy about this and that's really cool and in terms of uh, pricing yes we're paying on a monthly basis and i know some people are annoyed by this but in my opinion that's actually a great thing now because we're getting like constant improvement on the software on lightroom and we now this means that we probably won't need to buy any external software or at least for landscape photographers like me that are using uh, only this type of software we won't need to buy like dxo pure raw which actually i won't buy because now i have the denoise in lightroom i won't need to buy a new license for topaz which only lasts one year if you want to update you get lifetime product use but you get a license update for one year with uh, with topaz i won't need to buy a topaz license anymore which actually is is amazing so yeah it, all in all i think it was a very strategic move for lightroom uh, and adobe in general and i guess users will be very happy with this it will enhance very um like very well the the way we process our images for people who are using fuji you saw that the files are getting like very clean right out of the of the software and for other people with the, using other brands then you're going to be also extremely happy i'm fairly sure with the result that you're going to get so yeah that's really amazing the beginning of uh, of something much cooler coming up so i guess with that wish you good luck with your photography and see you in the next video